Hi everyone, I just want to take a few minutes just to talk through uh, some of the key points of a meeting, well, a course that I did last week. Uh, the title is The Role of Talk in the Development of Children's Scientific Understanding. So a lot of this is not new to most people here, um, but it is worth recapping the characteristics of talk. So poor group talk would include things like children find it hard to listen, one child dominates, ideas not given critical consideration, disagreements lead to unconstructive arguments, We've seen quite a few of that. And children will just agree and happily go along with any idea because it's quicker and easier. Uh, good group talk, however, is all children are participating. Children consider each other's ideas critically. Disagreements can happen, but the children attempt to resolve them through discussion and reasoning as opposed to just arguing and shouting at each other. Uh, the group achieves more than the sum of the individual contributions. Again, nothing new, but worth reminding ourselves of. One of the tasks that we did look at was using picture prompts. Now, these picture prompts could come from anywhere, such as Google, Pobble 365, Literacy Said, etc. Um, but with the picture, you're posing a question. So in this particular case here, how do you think the tree got inside the house? So you would give the children a set period of time and ask them just to generally discuss it. Now, there'll be all sorts come up in this. Um, you might want to prompt them if necessary with questions such as, what can you see that is living, not living? What's the house made from? What do you think happened to the roof? How might the house have looked differently before or in the past? What might it look like in the future? How long do you think the tree has been inside the house? What does the tree need to stay alive? Now, obviously, those questions would change depending on what your picture was on, but you get the general gist of it. You can have a scientific focus to pretty much any picture that you want. Now, the idea is um, to construct explanations and link their ideas with evidence. Uh, to confidently, I should say, make confident challenges to the ideas and thoughts of other people. Because you might disagree with what they're saying, but then explain why. And then to explore scientific terminology and using it with genuine understanding. So these are the sort of things that you might use as a quick starter within a science lesson. Um, <clears throat> they gave us um, the idea of a couple of books for uh, facilitating scientific talk. One was Talk Box, which was mainly for Key Stage 1. And there was Thinking Together, which was for Key Stage 2. I might have a look into those and see what they're like. This task here, uh, we had a go at. Um, I really enjoyed this. And I've had a go at this with the Year 4 children who are currently in school. Um, you put in pairs or you put in groups. And you're given a group number. And then you're given a criteria to make. So in this case, we were given animals. So the choice of giraffe, elephant, camel, bird, etc. The children don't choose these. You give them these. And you give them a set period of time. And using the aluminium foil, the children have actually got to make a model of that creature, a model of that animal. But the idea is that whilst they're making it, they're discussing the various features of the animal. So for me, making this rather dodgy looking giraffe, I started off, well, a giraffe's got a long neck. So I made the neck first. And then, OK, it's a mammal, so it's got four legs. So I needed to have four legs. And what you're using there is scientific vocabulary, and in this case, the features of the animal, whilst you're actually modelling with the aluminium foil. The good thing about aluminium foil is it's a, it's a good leveller because <laughs> it's incredibly difficult to model with. But it's also fun. Again, used as a starter within science lessons. Now, when you're doing these kind of tasks with the children, what you want to produce is the language of rational argument. So instead of them just falling out with each other, getting them to question each other. Um, so why do you think that? What's your reason for that? How do you know? What is your evidence? Do you have any other evidence for that? Can you think of another reason for your idea? Can you think of any reasons why your idea might not be right? What reasons might someone else have? Can you explain why you don't agree with me? Why might this not be true? Again, this is nothing new to everybody. And we use these kind of questions all the time within reading comprehensions. But it can be applied to science reasoning as well. So it's just a reminder. Now, this task here uh, was a task I particularly liked. I'm just double checking, I've got nothing under there. Um, it's a sequencing task, but again, it's designed to create that discussion, that debate amongst children. So in this particular task, they were asked to sequence them from the coldest to the hottest, but then explain themselves as they were going along. We had the moon, which was put in there as a bit of a banana skin, bath water, North Pole, the sun, ice cube volcano, candle and boiling water. The idea is that you'd have a mixture of things that they're familiar with and things that they are less familiar with. Again, just to provide that debate and discussion. Now, it depends on their previous knowledge that they will bring into this as to how easy they find this task. But there will be some of these things that they will find quite difficult to do. So, for example, the sun or the moon. Okay. 
So possible misconceptions that might arise and they are, misconceptions are going to occur in these kind of discussions. And that's OK for the purpose of this task. So things that might come out in this particular one are that the North Pole is colder uh, than the ice cube because it's bigger. Bath water is boiling hot because I have to wait for it to cool at home. The flame isn't very hot because you can whack your hand through it. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. The volcano is hotter than the sun. But then the argument countered by a child in the discussion that we were having on um, Friday, sorry, Thursday last week is that, well, actually, the sun's millions of miles away. And yet on a hot day, it can still burn you. Um, so, but again, that would depend on the children's prior knowledge. The moon's nearer to the sun, so it's obviously hotter, which it isn't, but a child might come out with something like that. So the focus of this, given a valid reason for choices rather than their answers being necessarily correct, you might allow the controlled use of a misconception to facilitate the discussion. Just go with it, okay? Experimentation can subsequently dispel these uh, misconceptions. Children will, will bring prior knowledge and experiences to this, and that should be valued. Again, the focus is on the debate not necessarily having the right answer. Um, these tasks are meant to create cognitive conflict and debate amongst children. So it is meant to make them think and it is meant to challenge them and, uh, and encourage them to challenge each other as well, but in a constructive way. Um, this particular uh, activity here is a use of conflicting images. So, for example, we've got a picture here called garden picture. And it's what season do you think this is, is the main question. And then you're asking the children, why do you think this? And what evidence might someone have for offering a different opinion? Now, again, it's designed to create cognitive conflict, because if you look at the picture, there's things like daffodils growing, which would indicate it's spring. However, the tree's got no leaves and there's no sign of any buds. So you would think it's winter. In fact, all four seasons are represented in this picture. So, again, they're not necessarily wrong or right. It's just that debate. It's just that opening discussion that they have and this comes from the PSTT uh, I can explain resource on their website which is up there at the top so talking of the PSTT that's a primary science teaching trust there's their main website for curriculum materials that are free to access and I've just taken a few screenshots from there there's all sorts on that website and it's certainly worth a look if you're requiring any information for science if you want any starter ideas, etc. So do have a look at that. Like I say, it's free and there's a lot of downloadable resources which might be good to facilitate our lessons. Um, this I put in the shared drive and it is uh, starters for science and a bit of guidance. So there's 16 of these in total. So paper towels, straw planes, paper flowers, shadow puppets, etc. And it gives you the focus. It gives you keywords to go with it, tells you what you'll need and also what you might want on top of that. So again, there's two lots of that. I have um, downloaded all the websites and put them into a document. So again, that will be on the shared drive as well. And the short videos, we're talking four or five minutes to talk the children through it and then the children do the task. So again, a nice activity for starters in your science lessons if you're looking for something to do. Um, there is also a guidance document that comes with this as well. Uh, so for example, for paper tower, towers, it gives you the background information to it and the scientific knowledge that's underpinning it as well. Again, it's not for the children. That's mainly for your knowledge whilst you're actually delivering it. But it is nevertheless useful to know. I am going to have a go at playing one of the videos, not all of it, but just so that you can get the general idea about what's going on. It didn't work well last time, so I apologise if it doesn't work this time. As a matter of fact, I'm going to keep it minimised. That way, then, there's less likely to go wrong. <laughs> So again, the equipment that you require is quite straightforward. You might want to skip this in the main part of the lesson because you don't necessarily need this to introduce that to the children. A bit of background information about shadows, how they're made, maybe ask a few um, questions to get the children thinking to start with. You might even want to take them outside to go and practice this instead. So I think you get the general gist. It will guide you through that process. So I'm going to stop sharing there. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.